Hey, it's Eric with Cat Avenue. If you find yourself struggling with uh, scaling and paper space, you want to stay tuned because I'm going to go through some of the basic concepts of all that. So to get started, you might be familiar with model space, but we also have layout tabs down here. And these layout tabs represent our paper space. Think of this as a place where you're going to put your title block, maybe some notes and so forth, but then you're going to have a drawing maybe over here somewhere. Now that drawing is typically going to be drawn in model space. And then the notes and the title block and all this other information is going to be drawn in paper space. Some people do draw directly in paper space. It's a little bit harder to manage in my opinion. So typically you want to be working in model space, creating the core pieces of your drawing. To get started, let's go ahead and just draw something uh, here. And I'm just going to draw a simple rectangle. I know this is kind of a cop out, but it's just going to be the fastest way. So the, here's a two foot square. If we go into paper space, uh, you'll be able to see that square there. But that square could be at some scale that we don't even know. If we click on the edge of our paper, you will notice this is a viewport. And the viewport is a way of peering down into your model space. In fact, I could take this, this viewport here and I could drag it to make it smaller and then move it just like any other AutoCAD object. So when I do that, I'm creating a section on my paper to put a drawing in. Now this can come in handy when, let's say you have multiple uh, drawings. Maybe you have over here, you have a detail of something drawn at a different scale. You might have a schematic drawn in this viewport here. So there's two commands that you need to become familiar with. One is called MS for model space, and the other is called PS for paper space. So model space is used when you're on your paper to activate a viewport. So if I type in MS, you see how that viewport darkens on the, the outside? It's basically saying that this viewport is active. And even if I scroll with my uh, mouse, you can see that the scaling is independent of the paper. Let's go ahead and turn off the grids in this so it's a little bit clearer. So if you notice, there's our square right there that we drew. I can even pan over to, to get that centered a little bit in the viewport. Now we need to scale this viewport to the scale that we need. So in order to do that, we can come down to this area here, which is our annotation scale list, and we can select a different scale for that viewport. And keep in mind that viewport has to be activated in order to do this. So if we wanted to plot that out at, let's say, quarter inch equals a foot, click on that, and that's going to scale it up to the size that we need. Once we're done, we can just type in PS for paper space. And then we want to take this viewport next and make sure that this does not plot. Now, the way to do that is to just put it on the death point layer. Uh, now, depth points is a no plot layer. If you don't have it, you'll need to create it and then make it so that it doesn't plot. Otherwise, you're going to be able to see this when you actually plot the drawing. So if I go into the uh, layer menu, the LA command, and look at the depth points, you can see that it's on that no plot layer. Now that we've done that, we know that this is a quarter inch what we could do is maybe add some annotations. To simplify this whole scaling nightmare, I guess you could say, is to use what's called annotative scales. So annotative scales basically mean that when you create text or dimensions, or let's say even a leader, you're using that same scale that you're needing for this drawing. So the other way of doing it would be to use what's called dim scale. And dim scale is just another way of factoring the scales of different dimensions. Dim scale is something that's used inside MetQ or add-on. And I have videos about that, but essentially you're typing in a factor, let's say 48 for quarter inch or 24 for eighth inch. 
and it's using that dim scale uh, to size the notes and dimensions. But in our case, I think to keep it simple is maybe just create a both a text style and a dimension style that uses annotative dimensions. And I'll show you how to do that real quick. Let's go ahead and type in dim style. Here I've got standard selected. We can create a new style based on standard and call it anno for annotative and just leave everything as is and then notice it's checked the annotative on here for us say continue i just want to show you one thing here so if you go into the text tab you can see that this is set to 3 16 of an inch it's going to basically discard my style overrides for standard because i'm going to anno which is okay and then i'll say close now let's create a new dimension line and snap to those points and then come over to our uh, layout. Now this is going to measure that 3 16 of an inch if we were to plot this out at quarter inch equals a foot, which we have our viewport already set to. That's how the scaling works for dimensions. Now the same thing is very similar to text. So if we go into the style command or the ST command, this is for the text style. I have annotative style here created already. I went through the same process. I said new and then I made sure this was checked and then I said okay. So the same kind of thing as the dimensions. And again, if I'm in that style, if that style is active and I've got quarter inch uh, selected there, and I just put a piece of text in here, it's going to scale it the same as my dimensions. So it's figured out all that math for me rather than using the dim scale method that I've shown in earlier videos. Now the dim scale method is just an older method. It still works fine. It's just a little less cumbersome, I think, to use annotative when you can. I hope this video has been helpful. Have a great day.